Hello, I'm Mohsen Jamal and you watch Afghan News. Former U.S. Ambassador to Afghanistan, Carl Ikenberry, believes that setting up a national security force will cost the Afghan government almost three times as much as it collects in revenue. Ikenberry, who is currently visiting Australia, said that the near $7 million annual cost for the force would dwarf the $2.5 billion the Afghan government receives in revenue. U.S. President Barack Obama had announced in June 2011 that true withdrawals would begin in Afghanistan where Operation Enduring Freedom has been fought since 2001. The U.S. plans to hand control to a beefed up Afghan army supported by a much smaller Western contingent of perhaps 10 to 20,000 soldiers after most Western troops leave in 2014. Nehru said Monday that about 200 Taliban-linked militants had been killed or captured in major military operations by Afghan and foreign forces on Afghanistan's eastern border with Pakistan. Hundreds of Afghan troops based, backed by the U.S.-led International Security Stance Force launched a major offensive focused on the troubled border last week, going after insurgents linked to the hardline Haqqani network. Ice Office spokesman Brigadier General Carl Jacobson told reporters that as the operation have concluded, at least 20 Haqqani-affiliated insurgents have been killed or captured. About 175 non-Haqqani rebels were also killed or captured, he said, adding that the operations lasted about one week. At least two Afghan policemen have been wounded in a mine blast in the eastern Ningarhar province, local officials said. The incident happened at 9 a.m. local time on Monday in Jalalabad, the provincial capital, when a mine placed under a bridge near an Afghan police checkpoint exploded. Af uh, Ahmadzi Abdul Zai, spokesman for the provincial governor, said the group has claimed responsibility for the attack. He again surgeons usually planned mines targeting Afghan and foreign troops, but most of the victims are civilians. Pakistan Army Chief General Ashfaq Parvez Kayani has a point when he says that Afghanistan has to deal with its own problems instead of blaming Islamabad for then U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has said in an interview with Fox News when asked to comment on Kayani's recent statement that instead of blaming Pakistan for all its problems, Afghanistan should try to deal with them first. Clinton appeared sympathetic to Islamabad's position on the issue. Clinton said that Pakistan has lost 30,000 people to terrorism in the last 10 years, so they are trying to deal with the many different forces at work in their society. Her comments follow U.S. media reports that the Obama administration is warming up to Islamabad's idea for holding direct talks with Fatah-based Afghan militants. Rescue teams are striving to reach hundreds of people believed to be trapped and rubble following an earthquake in eastern Turkey that killed more than 200 people and injured more than 1,000 people. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Turkey's Prime Minister, visiting Van Prince province early on Monday, warned that the death toll could rise as more victims were found in the wreckage of shattered buildings. He said the situation was particularly grave in Erses, where more than 55 apartment buildings collapsed as a consequence of Sunday afternoon's 7.2 magnitude quag. Idris Naim Sahin, Turkish interior minister, said on Sunday that 100 people had died in the city of Van and 117 in Erses district, with another 1,090 injured in the quag. Turkey has mobilized some 1,275 search and rescue teams from 28. 38 cities, as well as 145 ambulances to speed to the aid of the victims, while the military said six battalions were also involved in search and rescue efforts. The United States pledged on Sunday to maintain a strong security security relationship with Iraq for years to come despite the scheduled pullout of all U.S. troops and warned Iran not to try to exploit the situation. Speaking to reporters after meeting with Association of Southeast Asian Nation Nations Defense Ministers on the Indonesian resort island of Bali, U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta said America would continue to maintain a presence in the Gulf region. President Barack Obama announced on Friday he would stick to plans to pull out the remaining force of 40,000 American troops by year's end, but Panetta noted that America would still have some 40,000 troops in the region, including 23,000 troops in Kuwait. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said on Sunday that no one should doubt America's commitment to helping support Iraqi democracy, in particular its neighbor Iran. 
Negotiation, negotiators from the United States and North Korea have begun talks in the Swiss city of Geneva re regarding the re revival of stalled negotiations over the Asian country's nuclear disarmament. The two-day discussions on Monday comes nearly three months after U.S. and North Korean officials met in New York, ending a long break in direct engagement with Pyongyang since direct talks collapsed in 2009. Other topics that could be discussed in Geneva include food aid to the impoverished North reuniting, reuniting separated families on the Korean Peninsula and recovering remains of U.S. troops missing since the Korean War. Washington insists that Pyongyang halt its uranium enrichment program and allow UN inspectors back into the country before resuming the multilateral talks. North Korea, however, has called for a restart of negotiations without preconditions. The National Transition Council has declared the liberation of Libya eight months after the uprising against Muammar Gaddafi's 42-year rule began. Thousands of people in Kesh Square in Benghazi, Libya's second city, sang the national anthem and waved flags, both of which date back to the monarchy, which Gaddafi overthrew in a 1969 coup. Mustafa Abdul Jalil, the leader of the NTC, knelt in prayer after taking the stand in the celebration on Sunday and promised to uphold Islamic law. The NTC leader thanked the Arab League, the United Nations, and the European Union for supporting the uprising, which ended with Gaddafi's death on Thursday. Abdul Hafiz Hoga, the Council's vice chairman, said at the ceremony that Libya would uphold, Libya would uphold all international agreements and treaties. And that vote counting is underway in Tunisia after the country's first ever democratic elections to choose an assembly to rewrite the constitution nine months since former President Zinal Abedin bin Ali was toppled from power. However, with an unexpectedly large number of ballot papers to count election officials said plans to announce results on Monday night might have to be delayed. There was huge turnout in Sunday's elections as voters exercised their rights to choose the 217-seat assembly via which will choose a new interim government and set dates for parliamentary and presidential elections. Bao Baker Betabed, the Secretary General Independent ISIE polling commission, said 90% of some 4.1 million citizens who registered ahead of the poll cast their votes. More than, more than, more than 11,000 candidates ran in the election, representing 80 political parties with several thousand candidates running as independents. That's all for now. Thanks for staying with us.